Hello everybody, today I'm showing you how you can make an NPC start from a starting position and end in a ending position. So for example, a NPC starts from here and he walks all the way to here. I'm also going to be showing you how to make a, the NPC walk in a specific line. So for example here, he goes here and then here and then here to the ending position. And I'm going to make a system where it spawns every second. So boop, bloop, bloop. And once it reaches the ending position, it'll wait five seconds, then destroy the mouse cursor. So like that, <laughs> just destroy it. So now you know what we're going to do. First, we want to get a rig. You can either go on plugins, build rig, and then select a rig from there. But I'm going to select a R feral character. So the toolbox should look like this at first, and just search up RFL, and click on this one right here, and X the toolbox. And then you want to unanchor all the parts in the rig. So select the head, then hold the shift while you select the humanoid root part. So yeah, just unanchor it, it's the box right here in the properties tab. And yeah now you want to add the starting position where will the rig start and you want to anchor this so it doesn't move and it can collide to false so nothing can collide with that part and now you want to add it again but put it somewhere else so for example it will start here and then end here so now you want to add a rod constraint and you might be like why am i adding a rod constraint well i'll be telling you this a little later and you should be able to know why and once the rod constraint is done you want to add a script add it wherever you want I'm adding it in the workspace delete the code and now you want to add two folders inside the script so duplicate the folder and the first one will be called the uh, the constraints okay the constraints another one will be the objects and you want to move the rod constraint to the constraints. Now, now that we got that done, we got, I think that's it. You want to go inside the script and get the pathfinding service. So local pathfinding service equals game.get service pathfinding service. So like that. And local paths equals table. And now you want to do for IV in peers, script constraints, get children, or get descendants, doesn't matter, do. And now you want to do local path equals PFS, create path, path computer sync. So V attachment zero. So attachment zero will be the starting position and attachment 1 will be the ending position. So attachment 1 is right here and attachment 0 is right here. And in order to make attachment 0, you just click on the rod constraint and just click it first and the last thing you click is the attachment 1. So now that you com computed the path, you want to insert the path inside the paths folder. Paths, number of paths, plus one equals half and you also want to make another folder called constraints and constraints number constraints plus one equals v and then you want to do local objects equals script objects get descendants so now, it will make a bunch of paths. So what this does, it is it gets all the constraints in here, so all the lines, and then it will get attachment zero. It will make a fat path for every constraint there is. So I only have one constraint, so it will make one path. And the path, the path is the starting position will be attachment zero, so this this position right here and attachment one will be the ending position so this attachment right here and 
that's basically all it does. Then it puts it in the table, the constraint, and the path. And once it computes all the paths, then it want then you want to do for IV in Pierce objects do V destroy. So we don't have any objects in yet, but I'll explain later. And you want to do a while loop now. While true do. Pass wait one second. So spawn an NPC every second and you want to spawn a function. What spawn function does, the difference is it it fires the function right away. You don't have to call the function. And then it then it goes to the next co code. It's, and um, yeah, that's all it does. So you want to insert this rig inside the server storage and do local clone equals gram.serverstorage.rfrorig clone. Clone parent equals workspace. And then between the clone and clone parent, you want to do clone. Actually, you put the position after the clone parent. So clone move to and before that you want to get a random so random equals math random one to number of paths and local path chosen equals paths random and you want to move to the constraints the constraints folder and I the random attachment is zero position because that's parent position because that's the that's the starting position and for IV in peers path chosen get waypoints do V no clone humanoid move to v position and clone humanoid move to finished wait so this should spawn a npc every second and then move it move the npc okay we got error here oh yeah Okay, no, the parent, we need to name the position. So the parts position. Okay, and as you can see, the NPC starts there, and it goes to the end position. Great. But look, it just, it doesn't destroy the rigs after they reach the end. So once they reach the end, it will, the line of code will go here. So then you want to put, um, you want to spawn, no, you want to wait 5 seconds, and then let's destroy the clone. Okay, test this. So first one goes all the way over there. And okay, great. But there's one thing. What, this where you might be wondering why I have this code and this code here, like we don't need it, right? But actually we do. So what happens if you want to make a sidewalk? So go to toolbox, sidewalk, and then click sidewalk, scale this higher, duplicate it and put it here. And what happens if you want the starting days, the NPCs to start here, but end here? but you want the NPCs to follow the path like this. Well, they it doesn't matter because they'll go, they'll cross like that. So that's why you need to put parts here. So the path, it makes another path instead and goes right here. So make, make like some parts and anchor them and just put them like right here along the sidewalk so they follow the sidewalk so duplicate it with ctrl plus d duplicate it
and then duplicate again. It's a lot of work, but it'll be worth it. Okay, so now that there are walls here, the NPCs will know that they can't go that way. So they'll have to walk along the path. So now they're probably going to go the right way. See, now they walk along the sidewalk. But the thing is, sidewalks, they don't have giant walls next to them, right? <laughs> so that's why we want to destroy these, path these walls, I mean, after the paths are made. So that's why we need to move all these walls into the script, into the objects. Because this script destroys everything inside the objects after it makes all the paths. So as you can see, it destroy and the path the NPCs go the correct way. And yeah, they're walking on a sidewalk. Great. And if you add more parts, you cannot and that's basically it. You cannot add more parts too. Anchor another starting position, another ending position, just go on model, click on rod, this will be the starting, this will be the ending, and then move the rod constraint to the constraints, and boom, you have another path, so now I'll go on random paths, you see? And that's the basics on how you can make, make like NPCs in GTA, like NPCs just walking somewhere. And I hope this video was um, helpful. I hope you learned about it. And yeah, there aren't videos like this on YouTube. So I want to share this information out with you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. But anyways, adios.